I'm going to be talking about Kanye West today and the recent revelation he made on social media, which pointed the finger directly at one individual named Harley Pasternak as being a vicious celebrity handler. That's what I'm going to call him. Um, Kanye, by the way, wants to be known as Ye now, and I'm going to do my best to call him Ye, but old habits are hard to break, so forgive me if I keep saying Kanye over and over. And listen, if you are um, if you are someone who doesn't follow Hollywood, doesn't care about you know today's music at all, it doesn't matter. This video is not celebrity gossip. This video is really important because it exposes. Kanye, Kanye exposes what has been going on in Hollywood and the music industry for so many years, and that is the way celebrities are punished and rewarded and used, viciously used, to create the narrative. And then the narrative creates the culture. And then the culture influences society. And all of this plays into what we are seeing today, where we got to today, with our economies teetering on the brink all over the place, with the woke agendas, and with the world seemingly on the brink of a war that I think in the end the technocrats want to win and install a global governance system with social credit programmable money that has an expiry date on it. And although Ye West is not talking about that stuff, he's talking about his own personal experience with being handled and controlled and threatened and drugged and institutionalized by his handlers. And, how, and you'll see how much he's lost along the way by talking about this. That's what he's focused on, but I argue it all plays into the same thing. So in this video, I'm not only going to be talking about Ye West and his cur current situation, but I'm going to show how it plays in to MK Ultra mind control on the entire population. I'm going to show you a couple of other celebrities who have also come out and made similar allegations in the past, but nobody to my knowledge, has gone as far as Ye West has in exposing one of the actual members and showing evidence of how it works. And I have these two movies here because I think you should go and watch them afterwards so you'll get a better idea of what's going on. If you haven't seen Slave Princess by Liz Crokin, you should go watch that. It's all about the handlers of Britney Spears. And then this movie, Out of Shadows, talks about what's going on in Hollywood, and how when you let corruption get as bad as it's gotten, the most evil things take place. Okay, but let's get to the story with Kanye West. And in order to tell this in a semi-dramatic fashion, I want to go back in time first to 2016. In November 2016, at a concert, Ye stopped the music and he went on a fairly lengthy rant. And he talked about corruption and collusion in the music industry. And he was talking about how certain artists get promoted. And the certain artists who get promoted seem to promote a lifestyle, a certain, a certain sort of black identity. And I think, you know, many people have commented that rap changed at some point from being joyful and poetic and, and having very insightful political commentary and social commentary to this gangster rap thing. And that shaped the black culture in a big way. The youth latched onto it. They could see how many rewards that the bad boy rappers were being given and they kind of started living up to those standards, living down to those standards. Anyway, it's not like Kanye said any of this explicitly and I'm not putting words in his mouth, but I'm just saying that in 2016, he went, quote, off message and he got punished for that. After this concert, they moved in on him really fast. He was taken to hospital, escorted by the police, and then institutionalized for seven days, kept under, a, what do they call it, a psychiatric hold for seven days. And then his concert tour was canceled out from under him.
All right, that happened in 2016, and Ye survived that and came back and kept making albums, kept selling fashion, kept publicly appearing. I think they thought they had him under control, but fast forward to 2022, and Ye, uh, Ye started making waves again. First thing he did, he went out in public with Candace Owens wearing White Lives Matter shirts. Now, they're both black. They were making a political statement that they've had enough of the cancel culture. They've had enough of woke ideology, that it's all BS. The people behind the culture are not honest. Anyway, this caused a big stir. And then just a little later, Ye tweeted out, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going Death Con 3 on Jewish people. The funny thing is, I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew also. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. Boom. I mean, mega boom. Uh, this kind of led to a hashtag trending on Twitter called The Noticing. And it's all about exposing some of the narrative control, let's put it that way, that the Jewish power brokers have exhibited over the years, over the many years, over the decades. And it was like they wanted to prove him right. It was like they wanted to prove him right, that you couldn't speak out against anyone who was Jewish, the powerful Jewish people. You couldn't speak out against them without being called anti-Semitic and blackballed. Well, they did exactly that. The, there was a massive push for censorship right after he did that. For anything he said, for anybody noticing what he said and noticing the names involved. They went full court press to try to demonize him after that. And sure enough, he started losing sponsorships, etc. It was not long after that that Ye decided to go on a YouTube channel, a show called Drink Champs. Here, I'm going to play a short clip of that right here. Yeah, let's have a conversation. But you ain't gonna send Harley Pasternak, Puff Daddy, Meek Mills, Kim Kardashian, none of the usual suspects, and get me to stop talking. You're going to have to take my life. Did you hear the name? He called out a guy called Her Harley Pasternak. He said, I don't care if you send Harley Pasternak after me, I'm not gonna shut up. Well, that was the first name he named. And later on, he backed that up with some evidence. As it says here, he posted a screenshot of Harley Pasternak text. He texted Ye West. And this is what that screenshot said. He said, I'm going to help you one of a couple of ways. First, you and I sit down and have a loving and open conversation, but you don't use cuss words and everything that is discussed is based in fact and not some crazy stuff that dumb friend of yours told you or you saw in a tweet. Second option, I have you institutionalized again where they medicate the crap out of you and you go back to zombie land forever. Playdate with the kids just won't be the same. That's Harley Pasternak talking to Ye West because Ye West was saying things that were inconvenient to the power brokers around him. And actually the power brokers of this world who want the narrative to stay intact, who want all their little slaves. And it really does seem to me that celebrities are slaves to these people, the handlers. Because if they can keep their people, you know, fat and happy and rewarded for saying the stupidest things, for promoting the dumbest causes, for going out there and pressing people, for example, to take poison injections. Well, if they can keep that intact, they've won the whole game. The world will go there. And, and like we're teetering right now on the brink of going there. But Ye just busted that narrative big time with evidence. You either play along, little monkey, 
or we're going to take all your toys away. Well, they did. They, they did as much as they could. Before that text was sent, they did as much as they could to uh, threaten and coerce Ye to make him stop talking. I mean, here's a Forbes headline. Billionaire no more. Kanye West's anti-Semitism obliterates his net worth as Adidas cuts ties. And it was much more than Adidas, but Adidas was one of the last ones. And it was a big contract with Ye, so he lost a lot of money there. But none of it worked. He kept going out there and saying whatever he wanted to say. Oh, they tried to get him to just, just apologize, just say sorry, just, just pull it back a little, yay. They tried, and they failed. And so the big guns came out. Harley Pasternak came out and told him, I will have you institutionalized again, again. And so we know that's who did it the first time. In 2016, that's who did it the first time. I want to point something out to you before we go on, because this is exactly what Kanye West is talking about. From his Wikipedia page, it says, Pasternak is Jewish and grew up in a typical Ashkenazi household. And that is not from Wikipedia. It's actually from a magazine called The Forward Harley Pasternak, Jewish fitness trainer to the stars, published in 2013. All right. So many have noticed that what happened to Ye, the machine's overreaction, all the denials that Jews have any power, all the hit pieces smearing Kanye West, all the calls for censorship of anything he's ever said and anyone reposting any of it, the canceled contracts and now the overt threats, are these, um, what you say, proving Ye's point? I think they are. And then, you know, the latest Amy Schumer linked Kanye West to Nazis during Saturday Night Live comeback. This was just the other night. Oh, gee. She linked him to Nazis. Like, that's never been done every day by the left, by the people setting the agenda. They call everybody Nazis. Everybody. So this is not shocking at all or funny. Amy Schumer is Jewish, and she also happens to be one of Harley Pasternak's clients. Coincidence? I mean, okay, so who is this Harley Pasternak guy? He is supposedly a personal trainer. That's it, just a, a personal trainer. He says, celebrity trainer, nutrition expert, best-selling author, TV personality, and gym designer, Harley Pasternak. Well, let's have a look at his celebrity clients, shall we? Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Kim Kardashian. They're the ones at the top of Pasternak's celebrity clients page. And you note Kim Kardashian there, she's married to Kanye. That is Kanye West's wife and her entire family is involved with Harry Paster Harley. I think the youngest one Harley Pasternak has been like a co-star of one of her shows. He's deep, deep, deep in with that family. And the Kardashian family itself has been pivotal, sadly, so sadly, in setting culture for the last, what, eight years, maybe longer. Bruce Jenner, now known as Caitlyn Jenner, so brave. He, she, sorry, I have a hard time with this. Woman of the year. Former Olympic athlete Bruce Jenner is now Caitlyn Jenner. And Kanye married into that family, of course. Now he's separated from Kim because who knows why? Hard to tell. But uh, what isn't hard to tell is how influential this Harley Pasternak personal trainer is. Look at his client list. Okay, that was page one. Here's page two. I cannot go over all these people. But Jessica Simpson, huge. Bono, huge. Katy Perry, Huge. Adam Levine. There's Amy Schumer. Will Ferrell. Rihanna. Megan Fox. Miley Cyrus. Amanda Seyfried. Jo Jane Fonda. Alicia Keys. Mac Miller. Tobey Maguire. I mean, every name is boom. So you can have a look yourself. And I'm going to show you a selected few of those later to s just to give you an example of what's gone on with some of them since they've been with Harley Pasternak. And I only looked into a few. 
All right, so I've just told you, you know, how influential this Harley Pasternak is and how he's perfectly confident, apparently, making threats that he can have a huge celebrity like Kanye West institutionalized again, right? He just does that. And yet, this is so weird. This is kind of an unsequitur, but I, I want to show you this because, I mean, it's just odd. This is from a year ago. This is Harley Pasternak appearing on a local British Columbia YouTube channel that only has 11,000 subscribers. This video only got 790 views, and he's doing some healthy breakfast spot. Do you think that's strange? Well, you don't know the half of it. Let's get into the real heavy stuff about the background of this Harley Pasternak guy. From his Wikipedia page, it says, during his time at University of Toronto, Pasternak served as nutrition and exercise scientist at Department of National Defense's DCIEM, Defense and Civil Institute for Environmental Medicine. And that was from 2005 to 2007, they say. As a scientist, Harley focused on performance physiology and nutrition with a specialty in caffeine and ephedrine. By the way, thank you to Restoring Order on Twitter for this find. Harley Pasternak, in his own words, in this video, says, working for the military, I wasn't governed by the same laws that the typical person was, so I could look at the impact of certain drugs that are not everyday things. And the area of, that I was interested in was how drugs and food affect muscular performance and what, when you say drugs, are that like performance enhancing drugs? Are they all or just, kinds of drugs? Oh, right. Okay. So working for the military, I wasn't governed by the same laws that the typical person was. So I could look at the impact of certain drugs that are not that are not everyday things. So we looked at a drug called modafinil, okay. which was for narcoleptics. So if you give a soldier this um, drug, uh, how long could they stay awake for without uh, having any health? detriment it will keep you awake but it's not a stimulant really so if a special forces person has to stay awake for three nights waiting for the right opportunity to do whatever they have to do we could give them a daffodil and would keep them alert experimental drugs not bound by typical laws and did you hear what he was talking about endurance Drugs for endurance, keeping people awake for long periods of time without them being high. Restoring Order says, the stuff with the DND gets weirder. This branch of the Canadian government once included the Defense Research Board. The Defense Research Board quite literally funded MK Ultra, as did the CIA. This program involved forced experiments with drugs, sensory deprivation, and brainwashing. And so you look at what Harley Pasternak said about his research all these years later, and uh, it sounds exactly the same to me. What else about Harley Pasternak? Here's something. Harley Pasternak is a faculty member at the Dalalana School of Public Health in Toronto. This may be of more significance, of course, to people in Canada, but the Dalalana School of Public Health is privately funded by a couple. And it has played into the insane subversion of public health, especially now during the COVID era. All connected. All connected. But there's one more thing I found about Harley Pasternak that... I think just tips the scales into how he is instrumental to the dystopia and how the things they're doing to celebrities are slowly being done to the public as well. Harley Pasternak is an advisor to a company called Optimi. Optimi Health says, our promise is to make a future whereby natural psychedelic alternatives aid a wide variety of mental health conditions. Boom. Uh, just a little bit more here to show you about this company, Optimi, that he's an advisor for. It's licensed by Health Canada to pr produce and distribute natural grade psilocybin and other psychedelic substances, most notably MDMA. 
MDMA is ecstasy. So really, this, this to me is how they plan on us being happy when we own nothing. Like Harley Pasternak says in an interview about w when he first met Lady Gaga for being his client, he says, for her, it wasn't about fitness. For her, it was about stamina and staying, staying awake and energized for her grueling concert tours. Aha. The promise is to bring this to more and more people using psychedelics for endurance, endurance of what the horrible conditions we're going to be living in when we get shoved into these 15 minute cities and we're tracked everywhere we go and our money expires if we don't use it and our electric cars won't go past the city boundaries, this sort of thing. Are we going to need psychedelics so that when we own nothing, we will be happy? And by the way, it's Canadian, as is Harley Pasternak, as are a bunch of his clients. Just quickly, let's see how well his other clients have fared. I'm going to show you this graphic. Robert Downey Jr. and Juliette Lewis both had mental breakdowns. Jennifer Hudson, Hudson had three family members killed in a horrible execution-style shooting. Ariana Grande had a massive terror event at one of her concerts in the UK. Ellen Page, now Elliot Page, is a trans man. Cut off her female body parts to become a man. And by the way, hey, notice this. On his website, Harley uh, Pasternak still calls this person Ellen Page. Isn't that some kind of woke crime? Isn't it called dead naming? Anyway, I don't personally care. And I'm not going to go through all these because I might do a whole other video about them, but have a quick look, freeze the screen if you need to, pause and read it. All right. I want to quickly play the clips like I mentioned that I was going to of Randy Quaid talking about this very phenomena. I think it was back in 2010. And then I'm going to go right to Dave Chappelle talking to Oprah about this same kind of thing. Ready, go. Okay, let's talk about the concerns that you have for your safety. You say that you, you're staying in Vancouver, you're staying in Canada because you don't want to come to the States because you're afraid of these people who are out to kill celebrities and you specifically. Why do you have that fear? I have, uh, I, I have a fear, that fear because there, for the last three years and really the last 20 years, there I've been racketeered on. My, Finances have been decimated by a group of people, uh, such as my ex-attorney, my uh, ex-business manager, and a, and a uh, an estate planner, uh, specifically, and they have uh, conspired together to uh, to co-op my my uh, corporations, uh, put in trustees without my knowledge. But are they to, now trying uh, to kill you? Well, yes. I mean, they not in a not in a sense where you know they're going to come over and shoot me with a gun or anything like that. But the way they've they've um, manipulated uh, the system, the court system, to have us falsely arrested and uh, to uh, make it impossible for us to uh, to operate from mm -hmm. on a daily basis in the most basic way. I mean, banking, right. owning a house, renting a house, right. uh, renting a car. I mean, we cannot, we cannot function. Okay, so if and I understand it, you correctly, it's, a, it's, it's not that you feel that, that someone's gonna kill you literally, it's that you feel that they're just trying to decimate you and take things away. If that's the I case, that's, that that's different from I feel that if things keep going the way said. they are, we will be out on this, we will be out, if things keep going the way they are, yeah. and we don't do something about it to expose these people, yeah. my wife and I will be out on the street, and we will, okay. we will be, we'll have nothing to eat, okay? okay. That's how okay. bad it is. Okay. And I knew I was gonna leave, so I got ahead of schedule, and I bounced. And I didn't tell anybody where I was going. The whole time, they're trying to convince me I'm insane. They were trying to get me to take psychotic medication. Yeah. Like I'm sitting around, you know, I was stressed out. But the people that were telling me I was insane, I believed that they knew what was going on. So, uh, this was troublesome. Yeah.
I said, I'm not taking this medicine, man, because I know these people be trying to control you or, or maybe discredit you. I was afraid, like, you but know. But you were stressed out. That's there's why. There's no question. question. But it's very stressful for someone to constantly walk behind you and say, you're insane. Oh, hey, how about this? I showed the work the first week, and they, where my office used to be, they built a wall there. Why? I didn't know why. But it came out later that they were like, well, they said you wanted it. I don't want to be walled up at the office. <laughs> I like hanging out and talking. Okay. Nobody... I mean, people let these guys tell their stories at the time, but nobody took it seriously at all. They just were like, wow, that's some awesome celebrity gossip. But they didn't get how deep it is. They, it might have seemed like just celebrities being either paranoid or complaining about their finances. But this is really, really twisted. Really twisted stuff. It is like MK Ultra for celebrities, keeping them in line so that they can be used. And we will punish you if you don't, if you step out of line. Or we might just punish you for the sake of creating a narrative. Like Ariana Grande with her with the terror attack happening happening at her concert. I doubt they, I mean, okay, I have to explain to you that I'm of the opinion that some of these things are staged events. I don't mean they didn't happen. They really happened, but they happened for a purpose. I mean, terrorism is an act of violence committed for political ends, right? We just don't know for sure who the terrorists are, if you get my picture, if you get my meaning. All right. Harley Pasternak, supposed celebrity trainer, outed by Ye West, and I thank him. Oh, and by the way, Randy Quaid thanks him too. Randy Quaid on October 6th says to Ye West, Satan has stopped the eyes and ears of our enemies. You are unity doing God's work. Courage is a gift. You are so very gifted. Peace, Ye. I believe Ye West is exposing the same thing that Randy Quaid and his wife, Evie, have been fighting to expose for so long. They have been trying, but they have been driven a little crazy by this. And so, like, I don't think they're crazy, okay? It, Randy Quaid, if you happen to see this, I don't think you're crazy. I get, I get the drama. I get the beard. I get the, like, screw you, society. I'm just going to be who I am because... <laughs> You know why. And Ye West, um, Ye West is out there punching. So I can understand why people are cheering him on. The people who know about this stuff. Harley Pasternak, celebrity trainer. One of many. Don't forget, he's not the only one out there. There's probably competing factions in this as well. But who does he work for? He is not, he did not come up with this by himself. He gets told what to do, too. By whom? I mean, do you think, do you think if he came up with this on his own and he was an honest guy and he was really busy with all these celebrities that he would have made that weird little breakfast thing I showed you earlier a year ago without good lighting on some unheard of YouTube channel? Who trained him? Who trained him? to train the celebrities. We know for sure that one level of this training came from the military. And then the trainers, some of these trainers, go on to film sets where they are introduced as the fitness coach for the, the cast, but they probably weasel their way to get in good with certain celebrities that they are they then going to groom and promote because they are under the control of a trainer and they will adhere to the narrative. They know the, the carrot and stick method works with people, right? So the trainer trains the celebrities and they use social media to reward or punish celebrities because as Harley says, when cameras started to be on phones, if you were in a grocery store and you saw Kirstie Alley had put on 70 pounds, you would take a photo and then upload it 
to Perez Hilton. And then everyone would know and it would be a thing. Because of that, celebrities are always in the public eye and they feel there's more of a need to always be within striking distance. You can't let yourself go anymore because it will hurt your ability to get endorsements, he says. So you see, social media has um, allowed, it's like the gossip columns writ large. They can be humiliated on a whim by one bad photo. Their careers can be wrecked. They will feel bad about themselves, get anxiety. Harley knows this and he uses it to manipulate his clients. And isn't this an interesting observation he made? Pasternak says this cultural shift has made it easier to train celebrities than it is to train non-famous people. Wow. Now, I know because he's a fitness trainer, the normies, the people who are not enlightened and, and haven't been initiated into the different levels of language out there, they'll see the word trainer and they'll just think fitness. Oh, it's easier to get celebrities to get into shape because they're on camera a lot. But I read it and thought, because of all this social pressure and social shaming that can happen to them in an instant, it's easier to train them into the narrative, into obedience than it is to train normal people. So yes, with social media, it's easy to police everyone and make sure they adhere to the narrative, which feeds the overall agendas of who? The military? The global government? And isn't it something that he works for the Dalalana School of Public Health? Because what are they doing right now? They're making everything a public health issue. You can see it when celebrities go off message. They call it a mental breakdown and they institutionalize them. But in the wider world now, they're talking about racism being a public health issue and climate change being a public health issue, aren't they? And so now you've got this idea that if anybody goes off message, they might be considered a risk to themselves and to public health. And then maybe you use experimental drugs to lobotomize those who can't be trained successfully in any of the other ways. My argument thus far, far is that they're shaping culture through controlling these celebrities and that has a lot of trickle-down effects. But here's something else that you must know from Harley in an interview in 2019. He claims that among his clients are kings, heads of state, and Russian businessmen. So this isn't just about singers and actors. This is about our politicians, our heads of state, the people who truly are putting the agenda items into practice out there who are making laws, who are punishing people, who are leaving our borders open, who are pushing poison injections on all of us. That is stunning. And I hope he's lying. But you know what? Somebody is handling the politicians just like somebody is handling Ye West. And they don't have the God-given inner strength that Ye apparently does. I'm going to stop talking now. Thanks a lot for being here. Go over to amazingpolly.net where you will find a way to contact me, a way to support me if you'd like. Thank you to so, so much to everyone who has. You will find interesting videos from around the web. You will find interesting articles from around the web. And uh, my back catalog too. So until next time, everybody, peace out.